doing today? I'm here with something a little different and kind of special. It is a 1979 ST50 by Ibanez. Now, of course, famously in 1978, all their beautiful copies of Gibsons and Fenders were cut up on the docks of New York and thus ending the lawsuit era. And Ibanez reacted really quickly with guitars of their own design. It's amazing how quickly they reacted. But this is an entry-level guitar by Ibanez. It's the ST50 Studio 50. It has two V2 humbucking pickups. These pickups are killer, and they were also used on the first series of Paul Stanley's of Kiss, Ibanez Destroyer Guitar. So these pickups alone go for a, a fair penny. Um, but this guy just... I found this guitar where else? At the great, great house of guitars. I was looking in the uh, Nobody Wants Me uh, cases. And this had come in on trade recently. It's a real plain Jane. It doesn't, you know, it's mahogany body, tobacco sunburst finish. Um, you know, it's not the most uh, eye-catching guitar. There's the headstock. I always loved the, uh, the first... Uh, post-lawsuit era headstocks. I thought Ibanez came up with a really cool design. Um, here's the back of the neck too. Beautiful three-piece maple. Just great, great grain in there. And the neck, the neck is one of the things that really struck me about this guitar. It plays fantastic. This is literally one of the nicest uh, playing guitars. Not that I'm much of a guitar player, mind you. I'm a bass player who, you know, knows like three chords. I'm really good at them, but... Um, but just beautiful 24 fret neck with rosewood fingerboard. And it's just a very basic guitar. Two humbucking pickups, volume, volume, and, and, uh, and a master volume, which I find kind of interesting and I actually kind of like. There, but there's no tone control on this guitar. Um, it's kind of like a poor man's Les Paul. But um, it's crafted very well. Um, it's just amazing how uh, the attention to detail that Ivan has put into their guitars of the period, even a very base model like the ST50. And they only made this guitar from uh, 79 to 80. So it's kind of a bit of a rare bird. I know there's some out there, but uh, I was just really uh, enthralled with it. And then I took it to the back amp room and plugged it in. And I was just astonished at how great it sounds. There we go. <laughs> pick up alone but you can blend all kinds of you know I can't play guitar or I really can't but you know Construction. It's done in two pieces with the seam running along the edge, so it's two pieces sandwiched together. But uh, here's another uh, thing I can sort of play. stage 800. That's a mouthful. What else can we play? Uh, what would Ibanez and Kiss, they have a long storied history. 
along with the House of Guitars, the House of Guitars was one of the first retailers in the U.S. to carry um, Ibanez guitars. And I remember that because I was working there at the time in 1976 when a lot of these just beautiful guitars were coming in from Ibanez and basses. And uh, I, uh, even uh, Armand, uh, Armand Shawbrook of Armand Shawbrook Steels, owner of the great, great House of Guitars, um, he uh, had an endorsement deal with Ibanez. So it was really um, just that association for me that really makes me love um, early Ibanez stuff. So uh, that's explaining my purchase. What else can I play? One, oh, we gotta play some Kiss, right? <laughs> My lighting's a little goofy today. Really great guitar. Um, the online, they're going for about seven to eleven hundred dollars or so. But a real sleeper if you can find one. So until then, rock and roll, hoochie coo, my friends. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.